The EC3 X1 3D printer. What do I think about it after some weeks printing? Coming up on Zachary 3D Prints. Hello, this is Zachary from Zachary 3D Prints, bringing you how to review news and other cool things you can do with 3D printing. If you're new to this channel and not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I will put every social media link I have in the description of this video. You can, if you want, support this channel as well. I will put the Patreon links in the description of this video. So, like you can see, this is the Easy 3 X1 3D printer. It's the one that I unboxed and did a first impression a few weeks ago. I will put the link of that video in the right corner and maybe in the description of this video. After a few weeks of printing and testing and well, leveling the bed because that was the hardest part on this printer because size of the building plate is very tiny. But what do I think about the EC3 X1 3D printer? It has a tiny building volume of 100 by 100 by 100 millimeters high. You can print several things on it in different kind of materials. But that I will leave for a later stage of this video. Control box. It doesn't have any display, so you have to rely on the manual that you got. The button with the house on it for homing, then you have the plus and minus button that is for loading the filament and unloading of the filament but be aware if the printer didn't heat up before light will flash very rapidly and then after that when it is heated up then it starts pouring out or retracting the filament and then you have the play button the play button if you are already heated up the nozzle then you can press the play button and then after a few seconds it starts with the most recent change or edit file on your SD card. I try to use the standard slicer that comes with the 3D printer but in my case it didn't work. I got some errors, I got different kind of things so that is one thing that easy 3 needs to check because I got the calibration cube I tried to slice it and then in some ways every time my model disappeared I don't know where it went somewhere in the air I don't know but it just was gone and then I tried to put a new model on it and then I got the error message from the slicing software that the model is already on the building plate well I didn't see anything so I really had problems with doing that so I have Cura I have Prusa I didn't use Prusa yet for this 3d printer I already had some difficult time to configure Cura for this 3d printer like I said it is not so difficult to get the right settings in Cura I use in this case on this laptop I use Cura 4.4 you have to added as a custom 3d printer with a building volume of 100 by 100 by 100 and also unselect the heat bed heat bed option and also one other thing you have to start from scratch what i did hook it up with the usb cable that came with the with the printer and then a slice print slice print until you get nice results so i did do some tests with Cura and eventually I started with a calibration cube that was not looking like a calibration cube at all. Well in some ways it had some form or shape like a calibration cube but then eventually you can squeeze it and it was broken. Well in this case I printed directly from the USB cable and also with the same slicer settings from an SD card as a standalone printer. But doesn't matter which kind of way that I went, in both ways it printed nice. Well, as you can see, I've got different kind of models here. And let's start with the ones that I have here on the left. 
If you're wondering what it, what it is, if you are familiar with the game Shadows of the Colossus, then this is the shrine. I printed in different kind of filaments, in different kind of settings, I printed the shrine. I printed without any supports, only a skirt. I just tweaked. I tweaked and I tweaked till I got some nice settings. And the surprise is quite nice because in this shrine, you got overhangs, you got some nice, nice uh, bridges. You got also a point where the, the nozzle was hitting away everything above. Well, looks quite nice. I printed those two. This one was just still some leftover bronze filament from Eason. I will put the link of that filament in the description of this video. It's a nice filament, but it is still brittle, like bronze itself maybe, I don't know. But I think it looks awesome, just like the little dragon. And this is the filament that I always use. And I need to say, both are printed in the same setting. So this was printed layer height 0.2 millimeters, infill 20%, temperature 210 degrees, and 60 millimeters as printing speed and a skirt then i thought well let's put the file on an sd card and let's see how it behaves well can you spot any differences but i think that the shrine looks amazing then i thought let's put it on the maximum size of the printer and let's see what is going to happen well this is a bigger one it's also much more detailed and don't forget, this one came off this 3D printer. It's not a perfect print. I did use some supports. I wanted to see how this is going to turn out. And I think it looks quite amazing. And then I was thinking, can I go higher in temperature? Can I print PTEG with it? Well, when I printed the first time, it was at 240 degrees. This is the temperature that I normally use on my Ando 3. So it's very brittle and I already saw, no, this is not going to work. I thought maybe you can only print PLA with it. But then I thought, oh, I'm going to decrease the temperature a little bit lower, 220 degrees. And this is the result, a little bit stringy. And I think when I'm going to compare it, by the way, it's both filament from Philrite, so same company. And I do need to say that PTEG is also nice to print with this 3D printer, even though the site says that it's only for PTEG. And then I thought, well, if I can print PTEG with it, can I also print ABS with it? As a matter of fact, this was at 250 degrees. I smell that is ABS plastic. It has different kind of smell. And I thought, well, I saw this, this tip, I thought, well, should I just put down a little bit of the temperature? And then at 230 degrees, I got this. A little bit, little bit stringy, uh, maybe some retraction settings that I should change. But I think that it looks quite awesome for this small 3D printer. And also, I did some printing because I love the project from Starship. This is the Starship without fins. I uh, had also the opportunity to print the fins, but I thought, well, let's do let's do this print. And I think it looks amazing. There are some some artifacts on, on the print surface. I cannot break it. I didn't use any supports. All 3D prints that are here, I printed without any parts cooling. So the only fan that is on this 3D printer is for cooling the cooler block. Further, no other fan, not in the control box and nowhere else here. Further, the 3D printer has four very small, tiny stepper motors and it's a direct drive 3D printer. What do I think about this 3D printer? Well, it's a printer that has some potentials because when you are looking to the things that are printed with it, well, some printers do have some problems. Well, 
This one doesn't really have that because I can print PLA with it, I can print PTEG with it, and I can even print ABS with it. Bear in mind that you have to have the right settings in Cura. And when you are going to experiment, use the USB cable. If you are happy with it, just write the settings down or save them and make sure that when you are going to use it the next time that you can just select the right settings and then you are off to go. You can also save the files on an SD card. I use the SD card adapter because it's micro SD card what's inside of that machine and it's almost good to go. It's a easy and very tiny build. The 3D print is not that big. You can put it next to your laptop or other computer that you are, you are using and this one well between every print I took it off the building plate take it off and then hit the play button and repeat the whole process again and I don't have to level the bed I don't have to do anything crazy it's just easy to do but on the other hand there are some upgrades possible some tweakings possible because if I look to this shrine I didn't use a standard Benji the front doesn't look that bad, but I also see that there are some potential things that I can upgrade on this 3D printer. For example, part schooling or some other things, but that I will leave for other videos. So to wrap up this video, when you're looking for a nice small 3D printer for yourself or maybe for your kids or maybe your wife or your husband, I don't know, but then this 3D printer has some little potential. If you like something like this to give to your kids to start with 3D printing, tinker and make things, then this is a great machine for something like $100, a little bit more, a little bit less, I don't know what the prices are, but I'm very happy with this and I'm going to do even more with this 3D printer. So that being said, thanks for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to Zachary 3D Prints and I will see you next time. And hey, if you like this 3D printer or you want to buy some other 3D printers, then check the affiliate links in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. And hey, let's make some fun with 3D printing. Zachary 3D Prints. Bye bye.